I'm gonna be showing you guys my updated skincare routine. If you have never seen me before and you haven't seen my skincare video before, I would definitely suggest going and watching my first skincare video. This is an update video. Just to touch on my skin's background a little bit, I am 22 years old and I have had acne since 6th, 7th grade, so I've definitely had acne for over 10 years now. I have dealt with just, you know, your normal small pimples, fungal acne, cystic acne, and when cystic acne hit, I really knew I had to do something about it. Acne hurts your confidence so, so much, but I was literally in physical pain. I looked up everything. I tried so many things. I started using way too many active ingredients, which was literally ruining my moisture barrier. About six, seven months ago now, I found skin cycling. I did not say this in my other video. The creator of skin cycling, Dr. Whitney Bowie, Bo, not sure, is the creator of skin cycling. Thanks girl, because you helped me out a lot. Skin cycling is a different routine every night to give your skin what it needs in that moment. In the last video, I showed you guys my routine. Night number one, exfoliation. Night number two, retinoid. Night number three and four are recovery nights. I've seen a lot of people talk about skin cycling and a lot of people talk about they don't wanna do skin cycling because they wanna use their retinols, their tretinoin and stuff more. And I gotta say, I agree. Agree. The whole thing with skin cycling is giving your skin what it needs at that time. After I was skin cycling for a few months, I felt like my skin didn't need two recovery nights anymore. By the time I got to the fourth night, I needed to exfoliate again. I wanted to use tretinoin more. So now I cycle between three nights. So night number one is still exfoliation. Night number two is retinoid, retinol, whatever. I use tretinoin. And night number three is recovery. Now I don't know what the next step is here. Three days seems pretty pretty good for me. I'll see in the next few months, but I wanted to share my new routine. I have a few new products that I switched out. We're going to get into it. Got our headband on and yeah, I have a full face of makeup on right now. I always brush my teeth before skincare. There's a lot of ingredients in toothpaste that can actually lead to like breakouts. And of course, before I start is washing my hands and my nails, especially like if you have long nails, so much bacteria and just achy stuff can be under there and definitely contribute to acne. This is not a necessary purchase at all. No one really needs this. If you really hate water going down your arms, these things are amazing. Water doesn't get everywhere. It's one of those things that literally nobody needs, but it makes life so much more convenient. First step is cleansing balm. I'm not even going to try and say the name of this product because I know I'm going to butcher it, but it is a deep clear cleansing balm. Cleansing balm helps remove makeup. Even if I'm not wearing makeup, I use it because I will have sunscreen on. I do have waterproof mascara, so we're really going to see how that works because I I haven't seen what it does on waterproof mascara yet, but I massage that into my face for about a minute. Times that you do stuff to your skin, like how long you leave a moisturizer on before putting on another one and how long you wash your face. I didn't know how important that was. And I kind of would just like wash my face, put all my moisturizers and serums on at once, then like instantly go to bed. I'm gonna rinse off now. Favorite face wash. I have never found a face wash that is this amazing. Delta MD Foaming Facial Cleanser. I get it all up in my hairline. If I haven't washed my hair in a few days and my hair's natural oils are coming out, makeup, sunscreen, skincare, build up and stuff like that all cause acne in your hairline and I rub this in for about a minute I'm gonna rinse my face off I dry my face with paper towels and I know that might sound weird this is like one of the biggest things that helped clear my skin I'm very sensitive to like fragrance and detergents and stuff like that towels can harbor so much bacteria and it can just like contribute to giving you acne when I wash my face I don't use hot or cold water I use very lukewarm water, like almost like room temperature. Today is exfoliation night, so I do not want my face to be wet at all when I'm going to put on my salicylic acid. I actually just ran out of this one, so thankfully I bought another one. This is the Paula's Choice Salicylic Acid. So I'm just going to put it in my hand. And I don't put this 
on my lips or eyes. And I bring absolutely everything down to my neck. I kind of prefer chemical exfoliants. Most physical exfoliants are just like too much and like too abrasive. I'm gonna be going in with snail mucin. I love this stuff. I've been using it for a while. In my last video, I was actually out of it and it was sold out everywhere because this stuff has gone viral so many times. Very, very hydrating. And I do like to go in with hydrating repairing products after I go in with salicylic acid because I feel like my skin just like needs to also recover at the same time. Thinner the product, the faster it soaks into your skin. For serums and stuff, I only wait like 10 to 30 seconds, honestly. If I'm layering moisturizers, I'll wait like a minute. I'm now gonna be going in with Dr. Oracle 21 Stay Aethera Cream. This is a water cream. I tend to like water creams more than like, like white colored creams. There are a few that I like that I might show in this video. But of course, Vaseline, Aquaphor, whatever, just something super moisturizing and not fragranced covering my lips so that they're super moisturized throughout the entire night. This is my skin right now. This was a pimple and it is scarring. I have a few red dots on my forehead and I am recovering from a hormonal breakout. I was on my period like a week ago. That's what that's from. But this compared to what my hormonal breakouts used to be and just my face in general, is amazing. This is not skincare, but I get a lot of questions on my eyelashes. I do use lash serum and this is Grande Lash. Tiniest little strip on my top lash. For all the people go crazy in the comment section because people really go crazy about this stuff. Supposedly there's an ingredient in here that like darkens your skin. Ever since I started using this, people started commenting on my dark eyes and they were like, stop using lash serum. It's making your eyes dark. I've actually had this my entire life and it's genetic. In my before and after pictures, I have the same exact darkness around my eyes. I personally really like it and I think it looks pretty. I feel like it makes my green eyes pop. Kind of looks like I always have bronzer or like a little bit of eyeshadow on my eyes, but some of y'all really like to point it out. Like it's like a negative thing. I will see you guys tomorrow. Now I'm going to show you guys my morning routine. I've had super duper oily skin, super super dry skin, combination skin. Now like other than probably when I was like a child, I have never had normal skin. So this is like a whole new world. I don't need to wash my face in the morning anymore. My skin isn't dry, oily. My products are soaked up perfectly. Sometimes depending on like if I do a recovery night, I have like a lot of product on my face from the night before. I'll rinse my face off water. Also just help me wake up. I don't really do that much in the morning. I, my face just like doesn't need it. I usually just go in with moisturizer and sunscreen. But if I like need more moisture or if I'm just like in a self care mood, I'll show you what I do. So I first spray my face with water. And then now I'm gonna be going in with my snail mucin. I love putting skincare products on that I can when my face is wet. Moisturize is so much more. I will go in with this serum if I'm gonna be putting makeup on and it does make my face feel like more plump, look more alive. And I feel like it just makes my makeup go on smoother. This is honestly my new go-to moisturizer. It's just like a super plain moisturizer. This is my other favorite water cream. It's by First Aid Beauty, the coconut water cream. This is still one of my favorite products. I'm just like testing out this one. They're honestly kind of like the same exact thing. Now, sunscreen does help with my acne so much and it helps with the scarring. Spring, summertime is coming up. I am going to be in the sun more. I, like made it a goal for myself to wear sunscreen on my face. Obviously like everywhere, but more on my face to see what my skin would be like in the winter time because the entire time I had acne, when I would tan and go in the sun and stuff, in the summer, it almost seemed like all of my acne would like go away and I had no scarring, no dark spots. But then when it came to fall winter time, when I started to lose my tan and all of the dark spots were still there and then I had like sun spots and it was just like not it at all. And this winter it didn't happen. I don't know where I am in the whole like sunscreen world. Bro, people on TikTok are like either pro sunscreen or like anti sunscreen. The pro sunscreen people are like, you need to wear sunscreen or you're gonna die of cancer. And then the people that are on the other side that are like, don't wear sunscreen, it gives you cancer. And I'm just like kind of in the middle because it's like, yes, I feel like the sun is so important and we need like the vitamin D and a lot of sunscreens do have really bad chemicals in them, but there is so much proof that sunscreen works. But all I know is that it helps with my acne. I'll see you guys on night two.
This is Tretinoa Night. I, of course, already brushed my teeth. And first things first, I'm going to be going in with cleansing balm to remove my makeup and sunscreen. Massaging that in for about a minute. I'm going to rinse this off. Now taking our cleanser and massaging that into my face for a minute, a minute, 30 seconds. Adding dry my face with a paper towel. And I'm really, really gonna make sure my face is dry before applying tretinoin. Applying tretinoin, retinols, and that stuff on wet skin is not good. But yes, I'm gonna be going with tretinoin. I do have a mixture. It's tretinoin, spironolactone, and clindamycin. Tretinoin helped so, so much with my acne. The before and after pictures are quite intense. I'm editing this video right now and I'm just popping in here real quick to say this because I know I'm gonna get questions about it or people are going to dismiss all of the research and hard work I've done to get my skin where it is now. But I have never taken Accutane and it's kind of just a personal reason because there is a lot of side effects and I feel like it's just way too harsh on your body. But I just wanted to let you guys know that because I know a lot of people will say, oh, like this skincare routine cured my acne. Behind the scenes, they like went on Accutane and we're getting facials and all this stuff, so. Okay, back to the video. You do have to get it prescribed to you by a dermatologist. This is from Apostrophe. It's like one of those things where you can like get an online dermatologist and you don't have to actually go in, which yes, there's pros and cons. A lot of people say they're not real dermatologists, but I hate going and like doing stuff like that because I have really bad anxiety. If you were thinking about doing tretinoin, just know the next like three to six months of your life could be just the worst acne ever. The first three months of starting tretinoin was I can't even explain how bad it was. It was the most painful acne I've ever had. It was my whole face was covered. But after you purge, your skin glows. I, I don't, I don't know. It's amazing. Just the purging really, really sucks. So I would say if you have like something coming up in the next like three months and you want to start tretinoin and you don't want to be purging, don't do it. The one thing with retinols and tretinoins is you barely like want to use any. I use this for my face and my neck. I do not put it anywhere near my mouth or my eyes. This can be drying and can irritate those areas. Other ingredient in this product is spironolactone. If you've heard of spironolactone, you're probably thinking, oh, well, that's a pill because there is a pill that you can take. It is for hormonal acne. I definitely know my acne is hormonal. Like the week before my period and on my period, it just breaks out so bad. When I went on birth control like two, three years ago now, it helped my acne a lot, but like I couldn't stay on birth control because just not for me. But that like proved to me that my acne was very hormonal based. There is a lot of side effects to taking spironolactone the pill. Like it can make you really dizzy and there's just a bunch of stuff. So when I heard about a topical spironolactone, I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna try that. And honestly, I feel like it's helped a lot. Yes, it could be the tretinoin helping my acne, but I've noticed a major difference around my period. Like, yes, I do still have minor breakouts, but compared to what it used to be like, it is like completely different. Definitely think the spironolactone is helping in that area. I let that sit on my skin for like a minute. Now I'm gonna be going in with a recovery serum. L to MD probably is one of my favorite skincare brands. They are a little bit more pricey. Their products are like pretty plain, but help my acne prone skin so much and it doesn't clog my pores at all. One thing I've really started to do is on tretinoin days, I will go in with recovery products when I'm using the tretinoin because I feel like my skin just needs recovery even with the tretinoin on there because my skin can just get overwhelmed from active ingredients. It has taken me about four or five months to get to this point to switch the four day cycle to the three day cycle and up my tretinoin usage. It's like your skin like Loki has to get used to it. Going in with that same plain water cream that I've been using before. I usually let that serum sit on my skin for like 30 seconds. Obviously, I'm not doing this right now, but something that costs zero dollars that has literally helped my skin so so much is doing my skincare in the dark especially at nighttime because i am a retired picker used to pick my skin literally every single day you know i had the little tools and i'm like oh i'm doing it right and i would put rubbing alcohol on them and i'd pose a little blackhead and i'd push it out no it's bad just don't do it if you have one like in your amazon cart get that 
out of there right now. You do not need it. I promise. You're gonna go for one and then you're gonna see all the other little spots on your face and then you're just gonna like destroy your skin, spreading the bacteria from one to the other. I'm telling you, buying that was like one of the worst decisions ever. I literally like got in a routine of just picking my skin every single night. I actually have LEDs in my bathroom. Let me just turn my ring light off so you can see. I mean, I don't do my skincare in complete darkness, but if I didn't have LEDs, I would. This lighting, I can't see anything on my skin. This sounds so stupid, but if I'm having a really bad like day with confidence, I'm just like not feeling myself, I think I'm really ugly, I will not turn my lights on and I will just have the LEDs on. And honestly, it's helped me so much. And I don't know why, it's just like, Ignorance is bliss. Like, I don't even want to see it. I don't want to see my skin. It has finally gotten me out of the routine of picking my skin. I have never seen anyone talk about doing their skincare in the dark before. I'm going to be going in with this Elta MD Sleep Recovery Mask. I used to only go in with this on recovery nights. Tretinoin is kind of drying, and I feel like I just need extra moisture this night. So when I wake up in the morning, my skin is like plump. It's not dry. It doesn't like look thirsty. This is like probably in my top like three favorite skincare products and of course drowning my lips in aquaphor exfoliation and retinol nights I do not slug my face I have dabbled in slugging and stuff before it's personally not for me because I am very prone to milia it's a buildup of keratin and it's like these white dots that you cannot pop like you have to go get them extracted I slug with aquaphor Vaseline it is like just not for me but if you do like slugging not good to slug over like salicylic acid or or retinol because when you slug on top of that all of those active ingredients under are working like too much and can be too much for your skin and like screw up your moisture barrier and I did do that in the past I learned from my mistake and it gave me red little bumps all over my skin because my skin barrier was like freaking out and then our lash serum and I'm now gonna go sit and probably watch TV and edit a little bit for an hour before I go to bed so I can let this all soak in. That is the end of Tretinoin night and I will see you guys tomorrow for recovery night. Look at how handsome he is. Today is our last day of skin cycling and it is going to be recovery night. And this is probably one of my most favorite nights because my skin the next morning always feels and looks amazing. Hands have already been washed. Of course, you guys already know the drill. Going in with our cleansing balm. Cleanser. And massaging this in for a minute, a minute 30 seconds. Tomorrow is hair wash day and this is fourth day hair. So, you know, we got product and oil and I don't want that breaking me out on my forehead or around my hairline. I leave my face damp. I'm instantly going to be going in with this recovery spray. It's layering night. And in no way, shape, or form do you need to use every single product I'm using. You do not need to use this many products. I am constantly testing out new products and these are just all of my favorite. And since I changed it to three days, I really, really like to moisturize on this night. On the side, I'm gonna have a little spray bottle full of water. So I'm gonna wet my face before I put on my serum, just a little bit just to get it like moist. I'm gonna be going in with this skin recovery serum. On this night, I really, really, really like to focus on recovery products because we are recovering. And I like to spray water on my face before because I just feel like the serums and moisturizing stuff soak into my skin better. So I let that dry down for like 10 to 30 seconds. I'm going in with our snail mucin. Same thing, letting that dry down for about 30 seconds. This is like the restoring cream that I've been using recently. It is really freaking expensive. I got this to test it out and I really didn't wanna like it, but I like it. It's by SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore. Specifically like to go in with a moisturizer that has ceramides. I don't take like a crazy amount because this stuff is like on the thicker side and I have not had an issue with milia with this so I mean, I've been using it for a few months now. Since this stuff is so expensive, I only put this on my face. 
this. Here's a little thing that I've learned. If I'm gonna buy expensive skincare, I'm not gonna put it on my neck and my chest. And I don't know if this makes sense, but I like to use higher quality products on my face because my face is acne prone. My neck and my chest do not get acne. So I will just go in with a super basic cream on my neck and my chest. This is a CeraVe moisturizing cream and it does have ceramides in it. And this stuff is not necessarily bad for my face. It's not going to break me out, but it's not going to be beneficial to my acne. Like it's not going to prevent it or anything. I hope I like explained that good enough because it makes sense in my own head, but when I was saying it out loud, it didn't really make that much sense. My back still is pretty prone to acne and fragrance really breaks me out. So I like to go in with the CeraVe. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute to really let it soak in before we go in with our next product. Now that same exact recovery sleeping mask, I'm generous with it. While that dries, I'm going to talk about a few other products and things. Okay, everyone's gonna make fun of me again, okay? I'm sorry I say it wrong. I don't know how to say it. I don't know if it's Kikaplast or Sikaplast. Let me know! Because everyone was just making fun of how I said it and nobody told me how to say it correctly. Kikaplast. And that's what I'm gonna call it because I think it sounds nice. This stuff is amazing. If my face is super dry or like red from being irritated, I will put this all over my face. I do that very rarely. The main thing I use this for is spot treatment. So this stuff has really really helped with my scarring and I got a quite a bit of scars going on right now I'm just gonna go across my face and touch a few scars And then I also put this on recovering pimples like pimples that aren't like actively Cystic anymore like they're like going away and the reason why I don't put them on Active like cystic pimples that like have a white head or something is because what you're putting this on It's like borderline slugging harboring all of the bacteria in there and can make it worse I learned that the hard way when I first started using this. Uh -uh. That's like all scarring and stuff. I have dry patches right here So I am just gonna put a little bit on there as well trick that I do for my lips if they're like super dry take some jojoba oil Put that all over my lips and then go in with aquaphor on top of that I feel like it really just helps lock in the moisture a few other things I want to touch on that have helped my acne and like my skin overall first is a silk or satin pillowcase these are satin most pillowcases are cotton and cotton just sucks everything out of your hair your skin and I would wake up and I just would look so dry and crusty when I just put all these moisturizing products on in the night so this has really helped with that because it doesn't like suck the moisture out of my skin as much I've gotten so many questions on like how my heatless curls don't fall out when I sleep or how does my spot treatment not get everywhere on my pillow and that is because I've literally trained myself how to sleep on my back and I know that sounds really weird it's been beneficial too to my sleep as well we'll wake up in the same position that I fell asleep in and I will sleep all through the night and it's literally helped me like not have nightmares I am a stomach sleeper with my head turned I actually figured this out accidentally when I was going through a really really bad mental health patch you know my anxiety was really bad I was having panic attacks like 10 to 15 times a day I started meditating every single night my favorite meditations that actually put me to sleep instantly are body scans So it like starts at the tip of your head scans all the way down to the tips of your toes And it helps you like relax each muscle and that's literally the only way I can fully relax my body I listen to guided meditation So it tells you to lay on your back and then I was noticing I was waking up on my back and like I hadn't moved all night and that is literally the only way that I can sleep on my back all night And then my spot treatment doesn't get anywhere. My kilos curls don't come out I don't have crazy bed head and speaking of hair. I wear a silk cap every single night. This is actually really, really beneficial for skin. There are so many products in your hair. Even if you don't put products in your hair, the shampoo and conditioner still are somewhat left in your hair. The ingredients that are in shampoo and conditioner aren't really meant to be left on skin. So a lot of people have bacne and chestnut and acne here and they have no idea why. It could be your hair products. And for me, I have a lot of leave-ins. I'm constantly testing new products. I go like five days without washing my hair so my natural oils are coming out. I don't want that stuff on my skin. Put my hair in a silk cap and it's literally helped so much with my acne and I had no idea how much my hair products were making me break out. I just want everyone to know that because it could literally be your hair products. I'm gonna put in a clip tomorrow of what my skin looks like. My skin always looks the best the day after recovery day. 
I always want to say this in acne related videos. If you're watching this and you have acne, you are literally so beautiful. Just always remember if you're going through a really hard time with self-confidence because of acne, because I know it can be really freaking hard. Nobody is looking at you and your acne. Just always try to remember that everybody is way more focused on themselves and what's going on with themselves and not focusing on other people. And if they are focusing on you, they're just projecting their own insecurities onto you. If they're picking something out on you that they don't like, they actually hate it about themselves. So just feel bad for them. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink water, especially before you go to bed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!